production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes right here on the Game Fire Network. I am proud to introduce the second episode of Basic Training to you. We are almost live from the year 1944, somewhere in northern France, potentially around the town of Semois. You may have heard of it. Anyways, we got a great show for you today. If you are listening to this audio show, you might want to consider stopping and going to the website and downloading or, or watching streaming the video show because this is another in the series that we started a long time ago called Basic Training. This is Basic Training 2, Advanced Training. Yes, I like the title of that. So, we will be basically giving you guys hints and tips that we didn't do last time. If you are interested in checking out Basic Training, the first one, it is episode number 11. It is up on the website at GameFire.com. In that one, we discussed waypoints and how to move with squads, countering machine guns with snipers, with mortars, with uh, rifle squads, and etc. We also talked about machine gun placement and what to look for in a building that you might want to garrison your machine gun in. We talked about uh, tank micro, and we talked about kiting. So this show, we've got a bunch of great stuff for you, and we'll get to all of that in a second. But before we go there, let me introduce myself. I am Bridger, a.k.a. Adam Ruzo for the Game Fire Network, and with me, as always, is my capable co-host, Vittensby. Welcome to the program. And I think I should start uh, changing the good to sweet to awesome to magnifico to strange words in other languages, and uh, that'll be my little It is always phrase. bien to be here. Wait a minute. That was, <laughs> yes, a, that was like French, exactly. with a, French with a Spanish accent. I don't know what the hell that was. Ignore me. <laughs> well, this, sh this should be fun. We got a good lineup of uh, things to show you guys, and I uh, can't wait to uh, pound Bridger into the ground. <laughs> yeah, except not we're really. not really playing. So, all right, right, let's move on to our first subject. All right, so our show will be consisting of a number of different things. First, we're going to talk about cover. We're going to talk about the interface and extra keys and things that might help you out when playing. Um, we're going to talk about mines and where you should lay mines and how you should lay mines. We're going to talk about pushing units off of capping a point to prevent them from capping. We're going to talk about how to kite with Cromwells because a lot of people uh, don't understand the range of the Cromwell and how useful that is, um, as well as some other things, including uh, a couple of extra little tidbits at the end um, with just small tips from each of us. So let's move into the first one, which is cover. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is vehicle cover. Some people don't realize that um, tanks can actually receive cover from objects in the world. For example, there's a, uh, a car over here that provides green cover to squads. If you put a tank behind it, it will also give the tank green, uh, well, what's called vehicle cover. Um, and it occurs with, for any tank, if you put the tank, uh, or vehicle for that matter, um, in a position. Let's just put this uh, back over here. And if you put that, you know, right behind, you know, you micro it so it's, okay, it shouldn't be destroying buildings. But you micro the tank in such a way that it is behind cover in the same way a squad would be behind cover, it gets what's called vehicle cover. And vehicle cover means that it receives 25% uh, less incoming shots. So a lot of the times if you put your tank in a crater, or for example right over here on the, on the side of this road, there's a little ditch that provides natural uh, yellow cover, light cover. Um, if you put your vehicle in that, that will constitute vehicle cover. It'll be sort of a hull down for the vehicle. Um, or just putting it behind sandbags actually accomplishes the same goal. It will mean that one out of every four shots fired at the tank will miss um, more than normal. So that's vehicle cover, and it can be very useful. If you are in a situation where you have a little depression like this along the road that counts as light cover, or you have a crater that's nearby or something to that effect, or a tree, or a car, or another tank, you know, uh, hulking tank uh, wreck, then it might be good to put your tank behind that or your vehicle because it will last considerably longer, actually 25% longer, theoretically, according to percentage statistics. So the other thing I wanted to talk about with, with, with respect to cover is, is cover is directional. And 
it, what I'm saying with, when that's concerned is cover in this game is directional insofar as if you're attacking a unit that's in green cover, for example, these Panzer Grenadiers here, uh, they are behind this sandbag. But that means they get the green cover as long as they are behind the sandbag with, ref with uh, relevance to where they're being attacked. So if they're being attacked from this direction up here, from the opposite side of the sandbag that they are on, they'll be get the green cover. If they're being attacked from the same side of the sandbag that they are on, they will not receive the protections of that green cover. So now uh, at the same time as we're making this demonstration, I wanted to show the advantages of using the tab key, which is another great tip for people. Okay, so I've got these three infantry sections all on my hotkey number one. And I've got them, I could either even drag select them, does, accomplishes the same thing for me. I get these three infantry sections selected. Now, what if I wanted to give these guys orders? I don't just want to blob them, I don't just want to click somewhere. Because if you notice, that just gives them sort of, you know, even if I click and cover, they'll just sort of all sort of move and they're not going to wind up necessarily in cover. Some of them, if you notice, when I click, there's a dot over here instead of in cover, and none of these guys, not all these guys are going to wind up in cover. The guys on the right are not going to wind up in cover. And what are you doing over there? Pardon me, what? <laughs> you don't like my wall? <laughs> the I was testing v? out Is wire. that the V for Vittensby? All right, let me heal these guys. Uh, no, I was testing out wire, and uh, if you sandbag in wire and you try to do it, you get trapped there. I've already got trapped there twice uh, between the sandbag and the wire. So. Interesting. Yeah, you got to be careful when you when you do that because when they're done, they tend to spawn in odd locations and have sometimes they spawn like actually in between the wire and the sandbag, and you have to delete the the wire. So I guess that's a tip if you're going to wire and sandbag something to pay extra close attention to the way that you're doing it. All right, so actually, I was just messing around, but I think that was a good save. <laughs> that yeah. was a good save. There you go. All right, so I've got these three squads, and I want to give them intelligent move orders without having to click each one individually, and then click over here, and then go back and click this one, and go over here and click, and then go all the way back. So if you're making move orders or attack orders or what have you over long distances, and you don't have to go back and forth, I've got all of them selected, but I don't just want to click. I use the tab key. So the first time I press the tab key, if you notice on the bottom of my screen, it's now selected the one unit. And I can click. And I'll just do it up here for now so we don't screw this up. And I click. And then I select tab again, and I click. And then I select tab a third time, and I click. And now I've moved all three squads very quickly without having to go back and forth. And I've done it, and they're all in different places in, uh, in, in cover. And that's also useful if you want to wind up attacking something from multiple directions. For example, if I know there's like a machine gun over here, I don't just want to click, you know, group select and click over here because they're all going to get suppressed. But if I do tab click, tab click, tab click, now each squad has its own individual movement orders. Each squad's going to wind up in cover and we're going to be spread out. So they're not a big blob, as it were. So that tabbing allows me to cycle through these three units down at the bottom and the fourth tab reselects all of them the other thing with this is very useful um, is the fact that my sandbags couldn't stop his mans from going around the other side no uh, the other place where this is useful is in at the base say you've got a bunch of units at the base and you need to um, and <laughs> what Sorry. I'm just I'm just God going with way. the flow, baby. I'm going with the flow, and you've uh, got to you've got to reinforce. You've got like three squads that all have a couple of guys in them. You got to reinforce. <laughs> so you drag select them, you hit tab, and you've got the first guy selected, and then you pound on your re re uh, reinforce key. So it'll be like boom 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 boom, tab boom boom boom, tab boom 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 boom. Okay, just like that. It'll be that quick. That's how you cycle through very quickly and uh, and and reinforce everybody. So tab is a very very useful key. And those are just two of the ways that it can be very useful for you. So I use control groups and tab. So I might have multiple infantry squads in my first control group, and maybe two is my machine guns and or um, you know or mortar squads or whatever. One of some other factions. Three might be my captain and lieutenants in this one, and I can order them individually with the use of the tab. Okay. So here's our cover directional thingy. Okay. First squad here. Second squad here. Third squad here. And we'll see how well these three Panzer Grenadier squads fare against three infantry sections, vanilla infantry sections, when they're behind cover, and then we'll do another one with them in front of cover, and we'll see how it goes. Right, oh I do have God. the increased squad sizes. The sandbags really couldn't stop my mans. All right. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of... Uh, now, there's vet veterancy blinking on one of these units, but it isn't actually selected, so there's no bonus. No, I don't there. have upgrade yet. Yeah. 
I want to make sure I have enough infantry sections for this next part. Because I think I'm going to lose here because you're behind green cover. So it makes sense that I'm going to lose. And it looks like I am. Well, I'm so not microing far. at all. Are you focus firing? No, I'm not focus firing I'm... anything. I'm just letting him go. Um, and that's going to provide probably the, the most consistent thing uh, for right yep. now. So one of my squads is already almost gone. And uh, we just got to see... What happens at the end? Captain, the lads are ready to fire. And it's almost over here. All your guys can still fire. Yeah, right. Okay, they still are. Yep. And one of my squads is still in very good position because it hasn't been getting shot at all. But one of my squads is completely wiped out. you still got at least one guy in that squad. So it looks like that green cover has been serving your guys quite well. And yeah. two of your squads are still almost completely full. Yeah, about 95% health. And yep. the other one's down to about 15-20%. Mm, so this is almost over. And you guys are going to win by a hefty margin. Now, we're going to redo this. And we're going to see what happens if... Uh, you guys, your guys are actually in front of, but still in the green cover on the sandbag there. And we'll see what the difference is. Because a lot of people say, ah, oh, well, I got a green shield on my guys. That means I'm in cover. When, in fact, if you're not, you know, if the sandbag isn't blocking the shots from the direction that they're coming, it's not really going to matter. So that one guy's hanging out by a trooper. Look at that. He's got no health left. There he goes. Now he's dead. Okay. Yep. So... Last guy about to die. There he is. Heroically giving up veterancy to the enemy. All right. So tell me when you got the uh, the guys back over there. I've got about a gajillion infantry sections here. Yep. I'm bringing the other three squads over now. Yeah. And My then we're sandbags gonna... will own your mans. <laughs> yeah, but I've got a... Uh... Wait, does Bren go over the sandbags? Where's that um... Bren carrier? I don't think yeah. it does, but maybe it does. Let's find out. Pretty sure it goes over uh, wire. I don't know about sandbags. I don't think it goes over sandbags. Let's find out. It's probably going to get owned in a second here, but I want to see if it goes over sandbags. I know well, it goes you can over go wire. And try to go by right the strap point. Yeah. I've made my own hole. My mans can go around the sandbags. All right. So you ready down there? Okay, they're all in green cover. You can see that right now. And yep. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with these three squads, and we'll see if you win by quite as handy a margin or if, uh, indeed, your guys get owned instead. Yep. Which is likely going to be the case, because even though they're in cover, they're on the wrong side of the cover, so they're not going to glean the benefits of it. Yep. In fact, that's what's going to happen, is your guys are going to charge out of the, the cover that they would have had there. I'll put them back. There you go. Okay. They're sort of back in cover. They're green to you, right? Yep. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't show up. Now they're green to me. Um, but so they're green, but look how much faster they are dying than they used to be. So green cover doesn't always mean that your guys are gaining the benefits. It is completely directional. You have to make sure that they're on the correct side. So that is our cover tutorial for this show. We're going to move on to the next discussion, which is actually uh, grid keys and uh, actually, well, keys in general, hot keys in general. We already talked about tab and there's a couple others that are very important that you might want to know before we get into uh, my versus Vittensby's particular um, personal preferences. One of the other ones is sandbag. Uh, sand wow, look what you've done to me. Oh, Sorry, man. what was that? My it's sandbags are stopping your mans? No, your sandbags are stopping my voices in my head uh, from talkings out my mouth. Is, all right, too many LOL cats. Oh. All right, so there are many things in the game. For example, unit sniped, or um, for example, uh, the ultra decryption will show you that your enemy has gone to tier four, or you've upgraded veterancy if you're, if you're Wehrmacht. That will show up on the left-hand side of the screen, and they'll have, you know, sound cues. So when maybe your HQ truck comes onto the field, you'll see something on the left saying, you know, that, uh, you know, your armored support truck has come on the field. Now watch here in a second. There it is. Infantry section completed. 
convert to MG Gary or complete it. And what I can do is hit spacebar, and it will move to each of those, the last three events that that happened. I think it goes up to last five or last three or so. Now what will happen is. It, when I hit spacebar, it will move to the most recent event that is shown up on the left, which is the Cromwell. And then before that, it was the, the Vickers on the Bren carrier. And before that, it was on this infantry infantry squad being built. So the spacebar can be an all too important tool. You hear the, the, the shot ring out and the sound of, of you know, enemy sniped or, or sorry, friendly uh, enemy sniper. You hit spacebar and it'll immediately bring you to the sniper's location probably before he goes back into cloak and so you'll know exactly where he is right away which means for example if you have a recon squad you can counter snipe him if you're close enough if you're fast enough with that or you can just know where he is and you don't miss it for the future the other thing you can do is uh you can also click on those things on the left and that will allow you to uh i'm gonna send some squad do you have a, a thing i can send some squads in to die at Mayhap. Oh yes. <laughs> Here's Would you like I'll to just, kill I'll something, just, Bridger? Oh, here. I'll, I'll demonstrate what I was talking about before with these uh, half-dead squads. Okay. Now, if I wanted to reinforce these squads, I'd have to select them individually, or I could hit tab. Uh, tab. Oh, T. No, no. It is. It's R. I just fail. R. 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 Okay. Now they're done. And I don't have to worry about clicking one squad, then going down here and click, 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 clicking another squad, click, 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 clicking a third squad, blah, 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 etc. So that is that is how you use tab. So I'm just going to send these guys off to their death. It's going to be a good time. Flack for Ling's ho. All right. They're just going to charge in your base and, and die. Um, moving on to other cool interface options. Some people keep asking me, for example, if I want to have the camera follow a unit like this, for example, um, they, they don't know what the key is. The key, by default for my game, is the uh, the quotation button. It's right next to the enter key on US keyboards. It's just the, the quote or the apostrophe key. Um, so that is, if you're selecting a unit, that is the follow button. And that is what you make, uh, make it makes the camera do cool stuff. Um, so that is another important button for you to know. Uh, let me think if there's anything else tab and space and default oh yeah 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 T is important for retreat <laughs> don't ever forget T if you're using the default key binds so yeah that that they're dying pretty badly pretty oh that's a massacre oh boy the blob yeah yeah that was bad okay I don't know if that was much mo like Juno Beach there or something I don't know that was terrible so now let's move on to our own personal preference for hotkeys. Now I prefer to use what's called grid keys, and I'll explain that in a second. Vintensby prefers to use what? Nothing. For this game, no. For this game, no hotkeys in particular. No. It's just his Uber Micro. But you do you you do uh, use the arrow keys, right? Yeah, just the arrow keys. I mean, I was playing some CNC three and some subcom and uh, what else do I have on my desk right here? Uh, some Dawn of War, and you know, in those games, you really do need to use some form of hotkeys, at least control groups. You know, control one, control two, control three, and then you know, switch around between that. But in this game, when you're only really controlling five or six units, and the amount of base construction you do is so minimal, and the amount of times you're actually going back to your base isn't more than once a minute, it doesn't really require you to have too much micro... I mean, the micromanagement is there, but macro management, Yeah, I don't, I don't really know if, you, if there's so much going on where it's like, wow, you know, I have too much to control, too much to think about, so I got to, you know, hockey every single building so that I can, you know, quickly build stuff and this and that. But it's kind of already hotkeyed for you, which is yep. what I like about That's what a good this point. game did. F F1 through F6 are the hotkeys for the buildings, for your base buildings. And you'll notice yep. them up right over here on the right-hand side of the pane. Uh, it'll even give you the little hotkeys um, right there. For the British, it's only F1 through F3, obviously. For the others, it's F1 yep. through F6. Um, so... He uses arrow keys, which can be very useful. If you don't have to scroll to the right and left side of your map, that leaves your mouse a lot more free to, you know, click click grenading and click where you want it to go. And that is an option, and some people actually prefer using, um, you know, WASD keys 
for their, you know, to be equivalent to the arrow keys, and they can still use control groups and things like that. So that's another option for some people. My personal preference is what's called grid keys. And grid keys are very simply, uh, uh, you can download these actually, they'll be on the show notes for this week's show. So go ahead to the website, uh, gamefire.com, and you can download grid keys for opposing fronts. And grid keys are very simple. This, uh, the buttons on the bottom right here, all these hotkeys form a grid of a, a four by three grid, right? And if you match that up with your keyboard, Q, W, E, R would be the top, Q, W, E, R. Then the next row would be A, S, D, F. And the last row would Z, X, C, V. So that means that any time I have a unit Whatever is in the top left corner is always going to be bound to Q. Whatever is to the right of that will always be bound to W. So no matter which unit I pick, those boxes will always stay the same. So if I had grenade in the bottom left corner, it's always going to be Z. But then if that changes to satchel charge or something, then that's going to be Z as well. So whatever is in the, it's, it's a positional hotkey rather than a, you know, uh, uh, something stupid like trying to use the first letter that uh, like like Warcraft 3 does, but then it doesn't always work because sometimes you only have 26 letters, but you have more than 26 abilities or the same letters shared, whatever, it's annoying. So this is a very easy way to learn hotkeys and remember them much easier because it's a visual representation, not a, I have to remember that grenade is, you know, E because G was taken by something else or what have you. The other thing is, it's an entirely left-handed hotkey setup, which means since your left hand is, if you're if you're a touch typist, is used to hitting all the keys on the left, uh, you don't have to reach over with your left hand to hit P for pioneers, right? Because if you're Wehrmacht and you just click on your HQ, pioneers are Q because that's the first thing, and engineers are Q because that's the first thing. That oh, that made me so mad when I got a po when I got Company of Heroes for the first time, and I tried to learn the hotkeys, and I'm like, okay, so the factions have very equivalent units. Pioneers are like engineers, riflemen are like Volks, machine guns are like whatever, and he's gonna explode something. What is he doing? Okay, this isn't good. Why? <laughs> Why am I hot, hot key out well, of this? I don't know, man. I'm just having fun. Clearly. Continue. I think you're getting bored. Okay. No, that's fair. Oh, jeez. Those things are having a <laughs> ball with my infantry as well as my tank. They, Wow, they're doing a pretty terrible job till, killing that Cromwell, though. Oh, there we go. Okay. Main gun destroyed. No. All right, fine. You can destroy the main gun. I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. My rant. I was so mad when I found out that you have these similar units. Machine guns, mortars, snipers, all the same on both sides. Engineers and pioneers the same. Riflemen and Volks fairly similar. Uh, Jeep and bike. However, when I go from Americans to Wehrmacht, they're completely different hotkey setups. Shouldn't it be the same for engineers as pioneers? But no, E for engineers when I'm on Americans and P for pioneers when I'm on, Ger when I'm on the Germans. Oh my god. God, that made me so mad. I couldn't, I couldn't memorize them. So I made the grid key setup. Um, so, which is uh, why uh, they, they exist today. Somebody else made them for opposing fronts, but anyway. Yeah, that was as poor as a bugged 1.3 strafing run. Ownage ability, fear. Why do you call them donuts? They're not. There's nothing to do with donuts. Are you Homer Simpson? What's going on here? That doesn't look like a donut to you on the mini map. <laughs> I guess it does. Oh, I was gonna repair that. You're too late. You have to use your grid keys better, Bridget. Yeah, okay. God, that ability sucks so bad. Let's see if you can They're shoot it They're shooting at the plane. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, that's right. All things shoot at the plane. Infantry shoots at the plane. I just didn't expect them to do anything. Yes. Anyway, uh, the next thing we were going to talk about is, oh, yes, rally points. Some people may not know. I know some people on here are going to be going, what the heck? Of course I know about rally points. Some people may not know that... There's a rally point in RTS games with your buildings. So if I click on my HQ building and I click this bush here, that means, or if I, let's click this one, and I click this bush here, that means whenever something is built from that building, it will move to that point. And the use of rally points is important because if you put a rally point too close to your enemy's base, for example, I think I've got this sector locked down then I will place a rally point over here, but maybe by the time it's done, they'll have launched an offensive, and that's now behind enemy lines. And if I'm not paying attention to that, and my, my newly built tank, my newly built sniper, my newly built machine gun, what have you, will charge into enemy's lines because I put a rally point 
on a spot that I thought was going to be okay, but turned out not to be okay. So put a rally point, be conservative with your rally points. Don't put a rally point all the way down where you expect your unit to, to wind up. Put it a little bit farther back, just in case you lose that area. So that's what I would suggest. So you click your building, you right click somewhere, or you can use the, uh, the rally point on the, on the interface, and it does the same thing. And that's uh, all the units built from that specific building will do that. Okay, what else do we have on here? Uh, Minimap. Use your minimap. Watch it carefully. There is nothing, nothing you can't, you know, see on the minimap. You're not going to get surprised necessarily that much if you're watching your minimap. It's very important that you keep an eye on the minimap because if you're not watching your minimap, uh, well, then you're not watching your minimap. And just watch your minimap. That's all I got to say about that. All right, let's move on to the next segment of the show. All right, moving on to the next segment, we're going to talk about mines. And uh, this is a very interesting, and you can be really tricky when it comes to laying mines. And I don't think enough people pay attention to these. They think of a lot of other things to do with their munitions. But mines can actually be a lot of fun. For example, there's a very cool trick that I don't see used often enough. Uh, put some sandbags up. If you're, if you're Wehrmacht, this is a lot easier than a lot of others. If you're Wehrmacht, put some sandbags up. For example, say you're from the north. So pretend I'm playing Wehrmacht here, and you're coming from the north, and build some sandbags here. Put your Wehrmacht, you know, this is very early in the game, before you come into contact with the enemy, put some sandbags here, and then start capping this point. And, uh, maybe not very early in the game, because you need munitions to put mines. Put, it doesn't have to be this long, you can do it just long enough to fit one mine there, and put some mines where the enemy is going to use your sandbags. So, say you're capping this point, or you're capping this plus 16 up here, for example, and the enemy goes, oh crap, he's left his sandbags. I will take advantage of his sandbags. Look, there's nothing here. Boom! Goodbye, most of the squad. And it's retreat time. I don't care if you're still there at the sandbags, you're pinned. I can run around, I can run over and kill you, right? So, that's a really cool trick and a sneaky tactic is if you can lure somebody into the sandbags via what was that smoke what this is not no this bad mine you want usage. to test the mines don't you listen you see how i shot all of those that's a good example of bad mine usage because i was able to kill all the freaking mines before they even showed up actually i can still see and them. here's your example if you look at your captain of uh pushing Units out of cover. Wait, let me well. get him back in cover. No, no, he doesn't want to be. No, leave him alone. No, he wants to be in cover. He's my bitch. <laughs> All right, so explain how you're doing that. You're just pushing in front. You're just uh, clicking to I'm, make your thing move and push in I'm front just, of him. Yeah, I'm just clicking around and, uh, yeah. You know. That can also be used when capping. Um, you can use that. If, for example, an engineer squad or a pioneer squad is capping, you can use your bike. I think you can use the bike, right? I know you can use the jeep. Um, you can use the jeep to push the squad, click next to it, and push it away so it stops capping. And this can be crucial in some games, like if there's just one victory point being capped or something, and you can get a jeep over there to stop it with just seconds left on the clock or something. That can be crucial. Another cool thing to do with mines, though, is, for example, let's pretend these sandbags over here are uh, tank traps. And I build a, uh, a small line of tank traps along a, uh, let's say, a choke point. Let's pretend we got a choke point over here on one map. Let's say there's, you know, stuff over here, and I've, and I've tank trapped off more of the map. And now we've got a choke point right here that things are going to have to go through. But I, I didn't tank trap this point. Instead, I'm going to lay a mine there because I know that the enemy is going to see, oh, he didn't finish building the tank traps. I can still sneak through. Boom, there's a mine. Another... Uh, just for ambient places instead of just, you know, lures and things like that. For different places to put things. For example, in Angaville, well-traveled places like this road here is a very good place for a mine. So look for choke points that are traveled often. Other things, for example, um, on Simwa or other places with buildings, you know units are going to be walking around the outside of the building. So put it on the corners where the, where, where the unit is going to be walking by. For example, you know, here at this corner is a lot of times units cap stuff and then walk down here, for example. Um, so on the corners of buildings where units are going to be well-traveled or just in front of objectives from the direction the enemy is going to be coming from. Another important point to make is if you'll notice, when you lay a mine, there's three actual mines. And you can do more damage if you rotate when you're building it. Okay, so we expect the enemy to come flying down this road. You can do more damage if you rotate it so that two of those are going to be facing the enemy. 
So these two mines, you can't actually see one of them, it's buried in the terrain, but two of the mines are facing the enemy and the one is pointed away. So if the enemy comes at this group of three mines from this direction, it's going to do more damage than if he comes from this direction. That's basically what we're trying to get at here. Another important thing to think, if you're going to lay a trap for vehicles and you know they're going to be flying down a road, for example, the middle road of Angerville or just this area here in general, um, and you lay two right next to each other, then it's very there's a very good chance that the momentum, even after hitting the first one, if it gets a damaged engine, will fly right into the second one and get hit. So that's another useful idea for placing mines. All right, uh, anything else you wanted to add to that besides your butterfly shenanigans? Butterfly bomb extravaganza. Well, I don't know if you want to do this now, but I have uh, quite the maze set up on the right, and I thought it might be fun if we could test the uh, COH pathfinding and see if you can navigate through the uh, good old minefields and uh, walls and walls of sandbags that I have put up with one squad, Bridger. Yeah, he was bored while we were doing this, apparently. All right, so you want to try? You want to test your luck? All right, should I use a Bren carrier? <laughs> no, I can't use a Bren carrier. It's got to be an infantry squad because Brens run over everything. So okay. All right, you can start from the bottom. You can start from the south. From the south, where's where? At the bottom of the hedges? Uh, wherever you want to start. What's what's our objective? What's uh, going to be our objective? I don't know. Survival. Survival. Well, I don't have that many mines. Though, <laughs> I didn't think of that until we started talking. So when about you mines. say infantry unit, does that mean I can use sappers with mine disposal? <laughs> <laughs> does that not count? That doesn't count. That's definitely a hack. <laughs> oh, right okay. There. Can I use right, Panzer so... Grenadiers and just hold still? <laughs> no. Panzer okay. Grenadiers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not gonna get to use. All right. Well, I found a gap yeah. that I that I took out with the with the Bren carrier. Okay. Here we go. Oh, gee, you hacked already. Uh oh. Uh oh, look out. That's a lot of Panzer Shreks. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Sorry. So there's a good place to put a mine uh, if you expect the enemy to try and run around that corner like I just did. Yep. Alright, this squad is going to get wiped out if they hit one mine here. <laughs> Alright, successfully hey. captured that point. Hey. No Look capturing. At this. this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> run, run. <laughs> Keep going. No, don't explode. Okay, this is this is kind of ridiculous. You went through the soft underbelly. Ah, okay, I see. All right. You'll have to give me another twenty minutes to set up more defenses. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Let's move on to some just general tips. Uh, if you're using the Cromwell tank uh, and you're fighting infantry, you're 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 gonna want to stay at maximum range because the Cromwell tank has a very long range. And let's just stop it right, right. here. And get it a little bit closer. No, don't shoot. Just move. All right. So let's see. Right now, the Cromwell could probably hit these guys, but let's upgrade to tank crew commander and see if he can. Leave those guys down there at the bottom left. And no, leave them there. Ah, no. You're moving them. Put them back. Please, I have to build more sandbags. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm putting them back. See, that's a pretty long range, and they still have pretty good accuracy at long range compared to some of the other tanks. So, right. at this range, you can do some damage, and you can get just in t just close enough, and you're going to be able to kite them, especially even if they're going to have Panzer Shreks, because the Shrek has the least accuracy at the long range. So that's going to be your best right. chance. And you see how it snipes infantry every single time it's going to kill a guy. So, five shots, boom, it's gone. If it has a command tank, those shots come even faster, and the sandbags... Stopped my really bullets did. from going around the other ways. Twice. What the heck? <laughs> that does that again. No. There we go. And just for good measure, I'm going to crush those freaking sandbags. There we go. Charge me with a Panzer Shrek Squad or three. We'll see what happens. I'm we'll coming. See how good my tank micro I think a, a level three vet Panzer going to do will be good enough. Here he comes. Oh, you missed. Stupid defensive veterancy. Worthless. <laughs> Worthless received accuracy bonuses. 
You can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, it got one off, but it missed because it was at extreme range. Oh, no. I'm cheating. My sappers are shooting. There we go. Yep. Come on, you're not close enough. Uh oh. Keep backing up. No, catch it. Ha ha. Flank speed. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You will not. You shall not kill it. Yeah! Oh shit! Oh <laughs> shit! No! Flank speed backwards! Flank speed backwards! Kiting! Kite! Oh! And that's why the Panzer Shrek is overpowered. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, other things: recon squads. A lot of people don't understand that recon squads are significantly weaker than regular infantry sections. And I'll explain what the actual penalties are. Uh, the actual penalties are 25% increased reload time, 15% increased cooldown. Cooldown is, the, is, is basically the same, almost the same as reload, but it's, it's like in between shots they have to cool down. Um, or no, in between shots they cool down, in between clips they reload. So a 25% increase to reload and a 15% increase to cooldown and I think it's a 15% uh, decrease in uh, accuracy. So overall the squad is probably between somewhere between 15 and 25% less effective as far as outgoing firepower is concerned until you start using that sniper ability that the recon squads have. So some people go, oh I can't believe my recon squad just got obliterated by two pioneers. Well, it's a lot weaker than the regular squads, and you have to keep that in mind when you're using recon squads. So building a lot of recon squads is usually not a good idea. Having one, keeping the one that you have in the early game alive, good idea. Building a lot more, bad idea. Maybe if you're playing against Panzer Grenadiers, getting a second one and using both the snipe abilities at the same time against different guys, that could be useful, but uh, not necessarily. Um, what is this? What is this? What is this bullshit? <laughs> Ah, ah, That's God. that bullshit. That's what that is. Yeah, suck incendiary grenade. Charge! No, no, I'm scared. It's okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. anti tank grenades on my building. I'm just having fun. Get out of my base! That's right. Blob on blob combat part one. Yeah, okay, part one. All right, other things. Do not float manpower. You see what I'm doing over here with 7,000 manpower? Bad. Bad bridger. <laughs> That's a bad bridger. Do not float manpower. That is not something you want to do in this game. You should probably not have more than 300 manpower at any one given time unless you have a very good reason. For example, you want to save up money if you're American Airborne and you want to save up money for dropping in an AT gun out of the sky, you know, at any given point in the middle of a tank battle. That can be very useful. If you want to save up for a Tiger, that's a good reason to have more manpower. But if you're just standing around with 800 manpower consistently, that's bad. And there's a very good reason for that. In alt RTS games, floating resources is usually a bad thing unless you're stocking it for a specific reason. And that is resources in your stockpile are resources that aren't on the map being used. Even if it means just having a squad sitting around somewhere guarding a, a post or giving you an early warning of an attack, right? So. Floating manpower is usually a bad thing. As soon as you get manpower, you should spend it. And there goes... Uh, everybody, some people were asking about what the bird's name was, so they were interested. And the name is Sheik. And if you can get the reference, then you will get uh, a shout-out. So, um, Sheik, isn't that some kind of uh, pad that women use? No. <laughs> okay. She didn't like that. What, anyway. what, wasn't uh, the other bird, Br Bridger's bird, uh, unfortunately passed away, but uh, the other bird was Relic. So yeah, well, we I nicknamed it Relic. Was... Its actual name was Link. And Link. Uh, that might give you some, some insight into why we named this one Sheik. All right, so uh, we are pretty much closing out. Did you, want, did you have any other uh, quick tips you wanted to talk about before we close this out? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, we you gotta try to navigate through my maze. That's the quick tip. Can Bridger do it? With tanks, I can navigate easily. <laughs> That's like, did you, you ever see? Try it? 
Did you ever see, um, what did you call it? There was, there was a mouse trying to navigate through a maze, but instead, oh, I found something. What is this? No, no, no. <laughs> nope, nope, no. shoot, do it, fire. Come on, Bridger, come on, just a little to the left. Oh, just I missed. a little to the left. Okay. <laughs> All, right, All right, it's time so. for the grand finale. And now for the finale, Bridger attempts to navigate through the mine-infested waters of the Vittensby Maze. Here we go. On the right-hand side of the map, you'll see the captain is leading the way. Probably a bad idea, <laughs> seeing as he can probably prevent them from... Oh, two mines already, and the captain's down to about half health. And there's three, four more mines, and these guys are having a hell of a time, and they haven't even entered the maze. This could get ugly, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope they have some better luck from here on in. And are these all my... Oh, there it is again. The captain's safe this time, but oh, there he steps on another one. He's not going to be able to give the bonuses to his squad for too much longer. In fact, because they're not in friendly territory, there he goes. And another, and another, and another. Let's see if they can get around this way. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting mines. Uh... All right, all right. I found us. I found a way to get through here. Your sandbags will not block these mans. Oh, except for that one who just got blown to pieces. That may have been a bouncing Betty. I can't be sure. <laughs> Another one bites the dust, but he's still alive. This guy's a trooper. <laughs> this guy is Damn, a trooper. It. We'll name this one. Dave Martin. Oh, he's stuck. Wait, can he get through? Come on, Dave. Can you do it? Oh, no! He was so close and yet so far. He made it most of the way through the maze. And now, for the grand finale, ladies and gentlemen, we have for you an exciting treat. We have the secret, the ultimate way to counter the blob. That's right. We know how to beat the Panzer Elite blob now. It is official. Here we go. This. Oh, is how you counter the blob. Right there. Booyah! Endgame, baby! Blob destroyed, millions of Panzer Grenadiers wiped out. Let me see. 47 kills for that. <laughs> 14. <laughs> and 7. And oh, what is this mine bullshit? How does this one have 27 building destruction? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> All right, sandbags. hang Sandbags. Oh, the sandbags count as buildings? Wait a minute. Keep your panther still. I want to see what happens if I, if I petard the panther. Oh, I took some damage. Rear armor hit. I might win. You know it. Oh no, we've got a we've got a verbal vin. That way, I'm, uh, there's no way. I can't win now. Let's fire the spigot, lads. Quick, quick. Oh, he hit him. How did he hit it? Oh, because you dropped the mines. Quick, get it. There we go. He's hauled down. Now you can't do nothing. Now you can't do nothing. Except when doesn't really matter, does it? That's oh boy. That's the finishing proposal. I, there's only one thing left to do, really. I have the secret weapon of which you will never be prepared. No, there's no GG. No, no. Not yet. Not till the fat lady pukes. All right. The last straw, which you are not expecting. Here it comes. Dun 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 Do your worst, headquarters command truck. What are you waiting for? Look at my purple wind mating. Come on, get in there. Make them shoot each other. No, you fools! Why aren't you shooting? Clearly your aim is terrible for all of these panthers remain. Oh, I guess I guess you could call that GG. But isn't that go to prove 
that you can't beat the British through annihilation. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I still do have two buildings in the map. So Anyway, I think that closes out this special edition of Company of Heroes, Tales of Heroes, basic training number two. We had a little bit of fun. We learned a lot of cool stuff. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Tales of Heroes, another... Gamefire production is FPS Weekly. Go ahead and check that out. And if you're not listening slash watching to Tales of Heroes via podcast, you're not doing it the best way. It's the easiest way. It's the best way. Go check out the website. We've got a FAQ. There's a link at the top of the, excuse me, top of the page. You can check out the FAQ for podcasting. Find out what it is and uh, how you can get set up to do podcasting yourself. There's a lot of great podcasts out there, and you're really missing out. If you have an iPod and you're not watching Tales of Heroes on it, I for shame you. Fits right on my iPod Touch very nicely, I must say. So, thanks guys for tuning in for Fittensby. I am Bridger. Have a great day. Night, whatever time of day. He says, see ya. Can you, can you see the whole screen? <laughs>